Shalom. My name is Hannah Nesher. I'm from Voice for Israel Ministries, and we're here today in the land of Israel. You can see behind me the uh, hills of Judea. We're in the Judean mountains, and you can see also I'm dressed up a little differently today because we are preparing to celebrate the festival of lots, which is called Purim. And so everybody dresses in costume, or Queen Esther, or the king, or whatever. Everybody's dressing up in costumes. You see people all over the streets just in all these crazy costumes. And um, so if you don't know what Purim is about, it is about the celebration of God's deliverance of the Jewish people from our enemies. All right? So they say that about all these Jewish holidays, there is a common theme which can be reduced to this, these three lines. They tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. So that's about it also for Purim. And it was when all the Jewish people came under the threat of annihilation by this one anti-Semite whose name was Haman. So we have these um, things that you're... A little bit annoying but we every time when they read through the scroll of Esther every time they say his name which I won't say right now but if I say it um, then everybody goes boo and they and they do these which is called a grogger or a rashan a noisemaker here's another one and uh, it's because God said to blot out the name of Amalek forever so what's the connection between Amalek and Haman is that actually King Saul, it goes way back to King Saul, he was supposed to destroy all of the Amalekites who attacked them. And instead, he left this one king alive. And it says that Haman was from the lineage of this King Agag, of who was from Amalek. And God said, said last Shabbat, Shabbat was Shabbat Zahor, when, which is, means a remembrance, the Sabbath to remember. And it says, remember Amalek. Remember Amalek. This is important. In Deuteronomy 25, 17. Why are we supposed to remember Amalek? Because God says you will be at war with Amalek always. And so this is so true because the spiritual forces that are behind Amalek or the Amalekites are still alive and well and still operating today. We, we are in a spiritual battle and a physical battle with this uh, the spirits and the powers of darkness that are behind all of these terrorist attacks. And so we are still in a war with Amalek and we need your prayers and we need your intercession and we need you to stand with us. You know, just this week there was a, a terrorist attack in Ariel where we used to live. It's the capital of Samaria, Shomron, and uh, a soldier that was guarding the interchange there at Ariel uh, was killed. The attacker stole his gun and then uh, stole a car and was shooting um, vehicles and also shot a rabbi who uh, has since succumbed to his injuries and has passed away. It's very sad. He was a father of 12 children. And so we are still dealing with this terrorism in our country. It's kind of crazy. I don't think that any other country would tolerate this kind of thing. but. But Israel needs, you know, we're going to be entering into an election soon, and we need a leader that will really rise up with the courage and the determination to, to deal with this, with courage and with strength. So it says, remember Amalek, all right? And so we're starting the festival of Purim with a fast. And this is in commemoration of the fast that Esther proclaimed. She proclaimed a three-day fast, no food, no water for three days. So we, we don't do that, but we do have a one-day fast where we fast and pray for our salvation, for God to save us from our enemies and, and to deliver us. And I want to invite you to join with us in fasting and praying for the salvation of the Jewish people and Israel. It says that a savior or a deliverer will come out of Zion and so all Israel shall be saved. We pray for physical salvation and also for spiritual salvation of the Jewish people. And another thing that I wanna ask you to pray for and to pray about is that the Jewish people who are living in exile will awaken to the danger and the threat to their existence and they will come home. Uh, we've kind of 
see a parallel between the situation today and with the Jewish people in exile and the Jewish people that were living in Germany before World War II. You know, they, they thought they were safe, they were, they were totally assimilated into the society, they were safe and secure, they were prosperous, they were comfortable, they were doing well. And then all it took was one anti-Semite to come to power and all their lives were um, threatened and that was Hitler and the Nazis that took power. And you know, after I read that after Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass, when they, they, they went through and broke all the glass of the Jewish shops, it says that there were thousands of Jews that did flee uh, Germany, but there were millions that stayed. And so we have to be careful that we are not passive and that we don't, sometimes the most dangerous thing to do is to do nothing. All right, we have to be willing to say yes to God and to say no to fear, just like Esther did when she was called upon to do something that would have been dangerous to go before the king and to, to ask him to save her people. And she could have been killed for that. But she said, if I perish, I perish. And I think that's the kind of courage that God is asking us to have right now. We don't have to be some kind of spiritual super giants. You know, Esther was just an orphan Jewish girl. And God uses just ordinary people to accomplish his purposes. And it says he uses the weak and the foolish of this world to confound the wise. So don't think that you're disqualified, you know? And uh, God wants to use each one of us. He has for us a destiny and a purpose. And so I want to also be praying that the Jewish people today will have the courage to leave the comfort zone that they're in and to be, come home to the land of Israel. And in the book of Esther, it calls for people not to remain silent. And this is going to take courage also. Mordecai was talking to Esther. He was speaking to her. And I don't have time to go into all of it, but really Mordecai represents the voice of the Holy Spirit to the church. And, okay, go on my website, voiceriza.net. And on there, under Feasts and Festivals, you'll see a bunch of articles about Purim and on the festivals. And in there, you can read about how these are all sort of types and shadows. Vashti, the apostate church. Esther, the faithful, obedient church. Mordecai, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then there's the king, of course, the king of kings and the lord of lords. And then there's Haman, boo, <laughs> who represents the Antichrist, the enemy of our souls, Hasatan. So Mordecai is speaking to Esther here, and this is in uh, chapter 4 of the book of Esther, starting in verse 13. And he said to her, Do not think in your heart that you'll escape the king's palace any more than any of the other Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, then relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from some other place. But you and your father's house will perish. And yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That, that verse just, I think, penetrates our hearts. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I, I title this position for a purpose. You know, in 1 Peter 2.9, it says that you are a, a chosen generation a royal priesthood. We have been raised to a royal position for such a time as this, not to just to enjoy all the benefits of being in the king's house. You know, Vashti was also in the king's house. Uh, she was so occupied with her own party and her own agenda that she didn't obey the summons of the king. We need to be the Esther church that when the king calls, we answer and we say, he nay me. Here I am, yes, Lord. And we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, that voice of Mordecai that is crying out to the church to not to remain silent. It takes courage not to remain silent, but to speak up, to fast, and to pray for the salvation of the Jewish people in Israel. Because, you know, there's something hidden here. Okay, I want to talk about this because the very name of Esther comes from the word seter, Seen tough rage, which means hidden. When it says those who dwell, Psalm 91, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, that is the Seter Elyon. 
It is the secret place. It's a hidden place. And so there's all these hidden things and hidden identities in the story of Esther. Mordecai said to Esther, don't tell anyone that you are Jewish. So her identity as a, as a Jewish woman was hidden. That's why we wear costumes. We wear masks. Our identities are hidden. Okay, you can still see who I am. But the, the whole idea is that of the hidden identity. And you know, even the identity of Yeshua, the Messiah, is hidden because it seems to most of the Jewish people right now that he's some Gentile foreign God that, you know, goes to church on Sunday and then eats ham on Easter, okay? And nothing could be further than the truth. You know, he went into the synagogue on Shabbat on the seventh day. He celebrated the Passover. He even died on the Passover. He's the Passover lamb. And he is our Jewish brother and Messiah. And so his identity has been sort of hidden. And I think the church also has a hidden identity because the, the true Esther church has been grafted into the olive trees, part of the commonwealth of Israel. We are together in this arm in arm, together with our God. And God is calling this Esther church to fast and pray and to intercede and to speak up for the nation of Israel, for the people of Israel, and for the Jewish people. And I want to end by just um, bringing up this one scripture that says that God calls his people to be watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem, to give God no rest day or night until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And you know, that word watchman can also be called a notzer, a guard is a notzer, and that's the same Hebrew word as a Christian. We follow Yeshua of Nazareth, of Nazareth. And so Christians are called to be guards, called to be watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem, to be watching spiritually for these attacks against us. And we are on the front lines of the battle. And we need you. We need your prayers, especially at this time of Purim. So remember Amalek. And let's take up our royal position for such a time as this and call out to God day or night, giving him no rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So thank you so much for standing with us. And let's remember that Israel has a right to defend herself. And this was written in the book of Esther, chapter eight, verse 11. The king sent out a decree and it says he gave the Jews that were in every city the right to gather together and to protect their lives, to protect their lives against all the forces that were trying to destroy them and to annihilate them. So Israel still, that, that order has never been rescinded. It's never been uh, revoked. And Israel has a right to defend herself. We have a right to defend ourselves against our enemies. We need your prayers and intercession. We need God's supernatural intervention. So thank you so much, and let's look forward to that day when he turns our sorrow into joy, our mourning into dancing. We're going to, after the fast, we're going to feast, and we're going to rejoice together to anticipate God's great deliverance of his people in the name of Yeshua. Thank you so much. Shalom and happy Purim. So I hope you enjoyed this message today about Purim. If you want to hear other messages about the other feasts and festivals of the Lord and about Hebrew word studies and uh, Torah studies, please, I invite you to go to our website, Voice for Israel, that's V-O-I-C-E-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L dot net. And just click subscribe and put in your email there and you'll be on our e-list to get our Torah studies. It comes once a week on Friday. So you have it for Shabbat for the Sabbath to study by yourself or with your home group or with your congregation or your church. And I believe it'll be a great blessing to you and you'll receive new insights and new revelation from the Holy Spirit. And also, if you want to learn more about Purim, I have a book that's called The Messiah Revealed in Purim, Festival of Lots. You can order that also on the website, hard copy or an ebook. And we also have a DVD called Esther's Last Call to the Church. And you can also order that DVD or you can download the digital version online on our website, voiceforisrael.net. Subscribe to our YouTube channel too. There's a great teaching on there that we did in Hudson, United States on this whole topic of Purim. It's huge. There's so much in there. And there's also an article I want you to look at called The Whole Megillah. 
Megilla is the scroll that will just give you the whole scoop, the whole Megilla, the whole thing about Purim and about Esther. So enjoy and be blessed and encouraged and inspired with this word out of Zion. Thank you for your prayers and for supporting our ministry, Voice for Israel. Shalom.